Hi, we are continuing our series of videos about the software PWGL and today I want to talk a little bit about the score notation format that PWGL uses which is called ENP score notation. So what is ENP? ENP is the expressive notation package. It is a significant portion of PWGL it is integrated very well with the algorithmic portion of PWGL so that one may be able to write algorithms that then translate into notation to analyze notation uh, for use with algorithms and then reconstitute notation again and things like that. And ENP is a graphical editor for scores um, in which one may actually um, grab and move around objects on the score as well, which is kind of interesting. Okay, so let's talk about how rhythm is presented in PWGL. And this is because the way that a score is organized in PWGL is really based on the way rhythm is organized. So let's talk about that first. So a long time ago, there was this piece of software called Patchwork, which was written originally by Mikhail Larsen, and it was used by many, many composers. And PWGL is Patchwork Graphical Language. It's sort of a descendant, direct descendant of that uh, software and it has inherited its basic paradigm for how to represent rhythm from patchwork. Uh, rhythms are basically represented by lists of durations. Given that the whole system is based on the programming language Lisp, one would not then be surprised to find out that yes, rhythms are, li are lists, basically. Lists of durations. And the subdivisions are determined additively, which we will see in a minute here. Okay, so here's a very basic example. I stole this from one of Mika Kuskankare's uh, papers that I found online in which he talks about rhythm in PWGL. I think it's called From um, RTM-Notation to ENP Score Notation from around 2006, I think. In it, he's showing how rhythms are represented in PWGL. You have a beat count. How many beats are we trying to represent? And then within that, a list of rhythms inside of it. So in this case, we're trying to represent one beat and it's consisting of one piece. So it's a quarter note. A quarter note is one undivided beat uh, given the default denominator of uh, quarter note four uh, in your time signature. Okay, here's another example. In this case, we have one beat, but it's now divided into two equal pieces. So if you take one quarter note and divide it into two equal pieces, you have two eighth notes. Okay, so that's basically what's going on here. Okay, here are a couple more examples. There's a quarter note and our eighth note again on the top. And on the bottom, we have one beat divided into two and then one. So that's a total of three pieces, and therefore it's a triplet. Since it's one quarter note divided into three pieces, we have um, three eighth notes represented there in the notation with the triplet um, sign above them. And then you see the reverse there on the bottom right. Okay, just a few more examples. Um, there are some uh, 16th notes, so one beat divided into four equal parts. Um, two sixteenths and an eighth, so we have one, one, two, and so forth here on this page. You can pause the video if you want to look at these and uh, figure them out for yourself. I'll just spin on. Here are a couple more examples, all again taken from Mika's paper, um, quintuplets of various types, and I don't know that I have any examples here, but one may certainly subdivide um, any of these. Uh, you can nest tuplets, in other words, quite easily. Um, I think we'll build an example of that later, but uh, for now let's just pass on. Okay, so how does a PWGL score work? Okay, it organizes information hierarchically. So, you start at the top with a score, which literally, if you look at the notation, is a set of parentheses. And then inside of that are the various parts. So each part is then a sub-list of this big list, which is the score. Within each part, if you have more than one voice in the part, each voice is a sublist of that list, which is the part, which is a sublist of the score. Then within each voice, you have lists of measures. Within each measure, we'll have a list of whatever beats are inside. Within every beat, you'll have a list of what chord is inside, and a chord could be just a single note or a group of simultaneous pitches. And then inside the chord uh, are the notes, which again, could be just one note or even could be a rest, which is usually represented by a negative integer in PWGL. And then if there are expressions attached to the note, um, those would be the lowest level inside all of this nesting of lists. So here's another graphical representation from one of Mika's papers. 
score divided into parts, each part divided into voices, each voice divided into measures, each measure divided into beats, and the beats may be divided into subbeats. Here's one more view of the same idea. Again, you can pause the video if you want to study this stuff. Note here also that we have some grace beats, so you can represent grace notes pretty easily in a PWGL, which is just lovely. And uh, this diagram, the previous page and this one, are actually showing you the structure of this, um, these two measures from the Rite of Spring. This tune should look or sound pretty familiar to many of you. And here's a little detail um, of just that the, what's in the box there is just that last beat, and then this whole representation um, is those three beats of the score. Notice the second one has a grace beat at the beginning, and there are indeed those two grace notes there, and the last one has a grace beat in the middle. Okay, so now it's time for us to actually build some things. So let's see what we can do here. I'll pull up PWGL, and we'll try to make something happen. Okay, I will keep this pretty limited for now because I'm trying not to make these videos insanely long, so we may just continue this in a future video but I'm going to try to get output to a score editor object here and I'm going to start with the text box object because um, the value box really I find totally annoying unless you're actually putting in just one single value because its editing capabilities are pretty minimal. So I'm going to take this text box where we'll type our score code and I want it to go to the score editor and what we need to translate the text score output into an actual uh, ENP score format is the ENP constructor object. So I'm going to feed the output of our text, which is nothing right now. See how it wants score notation. We'll send this output. We have the ENP constructor set to build a score. You could set it to build various things, but for now we want to build an entire score. And then it's going to go out to the score editor. Okay, so let's think. What is the easiest score we can make? How about one note? Okay. So one thing about this text editor object is that its output always, um, let's just put one thing in here, put the, letter, the number zero in there. If I evaluate this text box, look down here in our output window, it has put a set of parentheses around that zero. It puts a set of parentheses around everything that it outputs. So, um, and semicolon, semicolon equals a comment in here. So the score level um, parens are added by this box. Okay, so we don't need those. But we do need um, whoops. We do need the part uh, level parenthesis. And then inside the part we have uh, voice level. And then inside the voice we have a measure. Okay. Now, inside the measure level, we want to represent one beat, uh, for to start with at least, and we'll have that beat just be one single note. So this should be one quarter note. And we uh, close off our measure level. Notice how this text editor automatically shows you how your parentheses match. And uh, you don't have to format it with all of these indentations. I like it, especially to begin with, to show the structure and you can go back and make sure that your parentheses match at the given levels, which I like a lot. Now if we evaluate this, bingo, here we go, one beat of 4-4. Four, four. If I go in and say, actually, I want to have one note represent all four beats, or one note of 1-4, one, actually. Now I have a whole note. I could say I want to represent um, two beats with one note. Notice how the numerator of the time signature is changing as I do this. Basically, it determines that based on uh, how many uh, beats you specify. Now, let me try something tricky here and see if this will work. I'll say, all right, I want to have not only this, but also um, this. Two beats represented by one, two, three. All right, so yeah. So you can see that pretty quickly we can get some music notation happening here. Um, I'll continue this in another video, but this is a short introduction to how we represent time in um, PWGL uh, in terms of music notation. We will add pitches and other fun goodies in the next um, video in the series.